Today I'm going to make a mold for a game piece at the request of a viewer. Welcome to another episode. A viewer reached out to me to ask me to make an injection mold for some game pieces that uh, he wants for uh, a game that he's currently working on. And this is just a, a preliminary test mold. He needs some test parts so that he can uh, shoot some photos and uh, do some promotional material. I have no idea what the volume is going to be. I'm not sure he knows what the volume is going to be. So I'm just going to make a, a simple manual prototype mold for this. So the part is one that I showed in the previous episode where I showed how to take an STL file, which is what he sent me, and uh, create a 3D model, a solid model, from the STL file. And I'll put a link to that, or a card to that above, so that you can see that video. So let's head to the shop and uh, to the machine and start making the mold. I've learned to think about where the tool should be entering the part, and this didn't look correct, so I stopped it. I then discovered that the material was about an inch longer than it should have been. Once I corrected it, I discovered that the camera, which was in a new position I was trying, was in the way of the coolant line, so I had to adjust that. I start with the stock on the right and the X0 position on the left so that I can cut the stock to the correct width. And then after deburring the end, I put it back centered in the vise and give it a good whack to ensure that it's sitting down flat on the parallels. And then set the new X0 position. I don't have to set Y or Z because Z is the top of the parallels and Y is already set to the back vice jaws. You've probably seen me use a 3 inch end mill in the past to face off the top of uh, parts. I just got this uh, face mill. So it's an indexable face mill with uh, three of these triangular inserts. So I'm going to use this today for the first time to surface the mold part that I'm going to be making. This is my very first time using my new sh one inch shell mill to surface the face instead of using the three eighth inch end mill. And I could see fairly quickly that I needed to add an extension on the ends so that it wouldn't curve around before leaving the part and also that I wanted the step over to be more. There's an adjustable stop that I can use to center this under the, the nozzle. So what I want to do is first loosen this and then I can adjust it until it looks like it's centered. And then I can lock it again. And what that will allow me to do is to reposition it in the same place every time. So it's warmed up now. Um, what I'm going to do is uh, pour some more uh, pellets into the, uh, the hopper. So I'll just... Uh, pour some pellets in. Not too many because I'm going to be switching colors. Uh, and then there's a lever back there and I just put some plastic into the, the hopper. Okay, this is the first time with this um, mold, so I'm going to back the uh, pressure off and the injection pressure by quite a bit. So I'm going to back this off and uh, I think it's going to fill pretty well, so I'll back it up below 50, and then I'm going to bring it up until it starts to move. And then I'm going to try that. Over here is the injection button. And let's see if it filled. Okay, so it didn't fill. Uh, not surprising, and so I'm going to bump up the pressure a little bit more and then uh, try it again. 
So just add a little bit more plastic to the hopper and then give it another cycle. And I, I uh, can see it's still moving. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase this to uh, six seconds and see if that makes a difference. Okay, it's getting closer. So I'll add a little bit more pressure. I'm up to uh, about 80 PSI. And it's almost a complete shot now. Uh, if you look here, there's some rippling around here, whereas this is clean. So I need to uh, fill it just a little bit more. And uh, now it's stuck. So um, what I'm going to do is just pull this out like so. There we go. And if you look at the other side, you can see that uh, it's also the same thing, which is it's not quite filling. And there you can see the weld line. So I'm going to give it a little bit more pressure. And then I also have this hold for a little bit longer. So I set it to seven seconds on the timer. And that's looking much better. I mean, I'm getting some streaking because uh, the plastic is not, not dry, but uh, it's definitely working out. And this doesn't come out as easily as. I'm gonna have to figure that out. I might need to add a little bit more draft uh, in here. Because it definitely gets stuck on one side We'll see if that improves uh, with a few more shots. I'm going need to need to come up with a better strategy for getting this out. Or, as I said, remake the side that's sticking. Yeah. Yeah, aside from the color change, it's uh, working out. Okay, the other thing I forgot to put in here are uh, slots so that I can use a screwdriver to open it. And I can see that's something I will need to add. Um, for now, I'm just going to be careful. Try to be careful. Yeah, should be more careful. Okay, so question is how to get it out, out of there. So I'll put this on there, push hard, and basically what I'm trying to do is loosen it. And then once I loosen it, yeah, that does a much better job. So I think that's how I can get it out. I chopped up some filament in both blue and orange, and then I sanded the top surface to try to get rid of any burrs on there to make it easier to come out of the mold. At least that was the hope. I've been uh, purging this. I purged it quite a few times, and then I have been molding it a few times. And I'm still getting uh, some of the green coming through. As you can see there, there's a, just a, let me bring it closer. You can see there's a tiny bit of green. So I'm continuing to run this through And I'm also practice, uh, practicing getting these, this out of the mold. I'm going to try doing uh, just a regular purge. So I'm backing the pressure way off. And 
And then I'm going to clamp it in so that it's right on the edge. And when I uh, eject, you'll see that the plastic comes out into a nice blob. So I have to fill the hopper with some more plastic. Okay, then I'll grab that mess. And then I'll turn the uh, pressure back to about 90 psi, which is where I had it before. Still green. And it's really hard to purge. If any of you have any ideas, I'd love to hear what it is. Hmm. Yeah, what's interesting is that this blob here has very little green in it. So it seems to be that when it's under pressure, it uh, perhaps scrapes the barrels a little bit more and gets some of the, the green out. So perhaps what I need to do is, is create a, a mold that specifically that has a lot of volume in it that allows me to inject more plastic and get the green out that or the previous color out that way. It is allowing me to practice how to best get this out of the, the mold though. And one of the things I did, as you saw, is I uh, sanded it to get rid of some of the burrs on the top, but I also did some polishing on it uh, in the hopes that it would be easier to get out. And it's maybe a little bit easier to get out, but not a lot. I'm going to try doing uh, just a regular purge. So I'm backing the pressure way off. And then I'm going to clamp it in so that it's right on the edge. And when I uh, eject, you'll see that the plastic comes out into a nice blob. So I have to fill the hopper with some more plastic. Okay, then I'll grab that mess. And then I'll turn the uh, pressure back to about 90 psi, which is where I had it before. Still green. And it's really hard to purge. If any of you have any ideas, I'd love to hear what it is. Hmm. Yeah, what's interesting is that this blob here has very little green in it. So it seems to be that when it's under pressure, it uh, perhaps scrapes the barrels a little bit more and gets some of the, the green out. So perhaps what I need to do is, is create a, a mold that specifically that has a lot of volume in it that allows me to inject more plastic and get the green out that or the previous color out that way. It is allowing me to practice how to best get this out of the, the mold though. And one of the things I did, as you saw, is I uh, sanded it to get rid of some of the burrs on the top, but I also did some polishing on it uh, in the hopes that it would be easier to get out. And it's maybe a little bit easier to get out, but not a lot.
I'm going to over here. Alright, so I'm going to times. See if I can get me out of here. I've been at this for a while. I've done a number of purges and uh, this is the part that just came out. So for whatever reason I'm still getting tiny bits of green that come out every now and then. I'm having a very hard time purging the barrel. This should give you an idea of what I've been dealing with. You know, This is where I started purging and these are a bunch of different purge cycles. And the most recent purge cycle, I don't really see any green in there at all, but as I say the the recent parts are coming out with noticeable green on them, so it's a bit of a mystery. So as you saw, that uh, the mold worked out pretty well, except I, I probably need a little bit more draft uh, in a couple places to make it easier to get out of the mold, because there are some sections that um, are fairly deep and they seem to get hung up on the mold. But the other thing is that I was having problems purging all of the material out of the mold, and I've reached out to the a group on Facebook to ask for input and suggestions. I've gotten a lot of suggestions and some of them are to use acrylic to purge it. Another one is to get some polycarbonate regrind to purge the, the barrel and the, the nozzle. Another one is to take the nozzle off. Uh, I don't have any of those materials and I'm reluctant to take the nozzle off until I do a little bit more research. So what I'm going to do is contact AB Machines, the maker of this machine, and ask them what their recommendation is before I do anything else. That means that it will be in a future video as to how I deal with that issue. Now, there's another piece of information that I thought you might find interesting, which is I timed how long it took me to make parts when I was in rhythm, and it takes about 30 seconds for a full cycle. So that means that I can make about 120 parts an hour uh, when I'm using this machine. So that gives you an idea of how many parts you can make on a machine like this. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, comment below, and I'll see you next time.